Biden's t- talking tonight at the DNC. What's he going to say? I know what he's not going to say, which is he's not going to hold everything that happened against uh, again, to him against his own party. Yeah. He's not going to take it out on them. He is suffering the latest indignity to his presidency, which is the sitting president of the United States is speaking on night one yeah, I know. of the Democrat convention. I know. That's as humiliating as it gets. It, you're so right. It's, low, it's the lowest billing place they can put him. They want to get it done and over with so people don't think about him for the rest of the Such week. That's a good point. It's the whole thing. And, you know, and they're dressing it up as, if, oh, it's a theme. You know, we, we have him first and then Obama second and then Clinton third and, uh, and then Kamala finishes things off. This is what they want to leave you with. But re- realistically, you understand the tactics here. It's like they want to bury this. They, no. they know they've got a feature him, but they want to bury it on night If one. the DNC was a fancy restaurant, Biden would be seated right next to the men's room. For sure. That is not a fashionable table. He's in the last row in coach. <laughs> I know, totally. Really upset <laughs> that there's a line for the bathroom next to him. He's in a middle seat. Yeah, that's... Well, <laughs> no, it's such a good point. He's, but, and I'm, well, I mean, he deserves it and so much more and he'll get, he'll get what he deserves. But um, w- like, w- it does seem like prerequisite for party membership is being willing to set aside your own interests, your own self-respect, your own dignity on behalf of the collective. Yeah. I mean, how bitter do you think he is about this in real life? I don't know. I, I don't know to what extent he's capable of complex emotions or thoughts like that um, at this stage because he is impaired. But I I know pretty certainly that his wife and his son and his daughter, uh, you know, feel the sting. I mean, how could they not? Yeah. Guy's president of the United States. He, is he, still, he is still president, right? But then Obama stabbed him in the back uh, and in the front. And, you know, Nancy Pelosi stabbed him. They all did. They swooped in and they and they took him out. And they're not really ashamed of it at all. They're like they're they're pretty nakedly brazen about it. Uh, and that's and that's what we're left with. And like it is so fundamentally at its core anti democratic. Yeah, it's not about at all the, about the consent of the governed. In fact, the primary itself was rigged. I mean, Biden should have never even been on their primary ballot. The voters, fourteen million, which is not that many people, but fourteen million people registered their thoughts on the subject. And they said, we're with Biden. But again, it was it was rigged. They kept everybody else off the ballot. They wanted to keep RFK away from it and Dean Phillips and anybody who would possibly even deter from, from Biden gathering. My votes. pal, Jill Stein. Yeah, Jill Stein. All of them. But can I just ask just um, like about the nature of the Democratic Party? It's I don't vote Democrat because I don't agree with them on most things. Well, now I don't agree with them on anything. Uh, but really, I don't vote Democrat because... I don't understand like the requirements for membership. Like you've got a couple of brothers, parents, wife, child, you know, you've got a very, I know your family, very close family. If somebody said, you know, in order to remain a conservative or a Republican or a radio show host in good standing, you have to denounce your brother, Fred. Not a chance. Like, I think you'd die before you did that. Not a chance in the world. Right. That's right. Not a chance. If they told me to reject the tenets of my faith, I wouldn't. If they told me to attack my family, I wouldn't. Under any circumstance. No. In fact, that courtesy, that that obligation extends to the people I care about who aren't my family me members. Me too. Me too. So that's like- So personal insane. loyalty is more important to you. Love is more important to you than any human-made structure, correct? A hundred percent. Right. A hundred percent. But that's not true for partisan Democrats. It's not true in the Biden family. Just look at what they did with Joe. I know. I don't, there's no circumstance where I let my senile grandfather like run the country. Yes. Nevertheless, drive a car. I know. You know, you take away his license and you figure out how to take care of him. How many people do you know where as they had relative advanced to like really late stage of losing their faculties, they had to take their guns away or like yeah. take their license away. That's right. It's a super difficult conversation, oh, yeah. but it's one that's done out of immense love. It's really hard. And that's not, that's not what happened here. Instead, we all got stuck with the liabilities, the, the country that is. And, you know, I do think that obviously crystal clear, as you've said for so long, and I've been saying a long time, there's still a lot of string pulling going on with Biden. Yep. You're, you're supposed to comfort yourself with this notion that somebody else is actually running the show. Don't worry, the senile guy's not. But I actually think the most dangerous answer is that he is in charge of some things. And 
I think some of the chaos we've seen yeah. is the result of that. I think Afghanistan, in a big way, was probably as a result of his senility. The fact that we lost all those people, 13, and then he gets there to that dignified transfer of remains, which should be a dignified transfer of remains in, in Delaware, and um, doesn't for a moment give them the decency that they deserve in light of his decisions. Talks about himself and his, his own son who died in Iraq in a firefight. Yeah, ignores them, stares at his watch. It's it's um some of the most offensive things that any of us have ever seen. Well, he did something that I saw personally uh, up close several years ago before he ran that I thought was one of the lowest things I've ever seen. He had this daughter-in-law, his son, Hunter's wife, who I thought was a great person. Um, I thought she was a great person. And he winds up having an affair with his sister-in-law. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously this is devastating to his wife and three children. Um, you know, but these things, you know, whatever, I, I'm trying to judge, but it's a, it's a big deal, right? And it's a big deal in the neighborhood that we live in in D.C. at the time. And Joe Biden, in his horrible, disgusting, ludicrous, fake doctor wife, issue this statement saying, we support Hunter and his new love, you know, our deceased son's widow. And don't even mention his daughter-in-law, who has been a loyal family member for over 20 years, has traveled a lot with Joe Biden because his wife didn't want to go with him. I saw this. And, you know, Kathleen Biden's like the mother of their three grandchildren. Like, this is not my business, someone else's family. Yeah. Okay, I, I generally try not to judge these things. But he issues a public statement saying we're on the new chick side. Well, what about this girl was your daughter? I have a daughter-in-law. Like, I know that's a really intense and important relationship in a family, particularly the father and his daughter-in-law. The mother of your grandchildren? Are you joking? Yeah. And they just ignore her like she never existed? I thought I was so offended by that. I, I just couldn't believe a man would do that. But then they reiterated it with London Roberts. She'd been Roberts. a loyal, good daughter-in-law. They, they did the same thing with London Roberts and her daughter, uh, Navy Joan. You know, they, they, Hunter's daughter, you know, just ignoring her existence, not even like, like actually going out of their way to insult her existence with the whole like stockings thing at Christmas. Like they won't even hang her name up. They refuse to acknowledge she exists. And to this day, I just talked to London Roberts not long ago. We interviewed her. She had, she put a book out about the subject and it's kind of, she still wants to kind of earn her way into their world. I think, um, that's the impression I got. Ooh. And I, I, I don't think she should bother with that at all because like they've been pretty clear about what they think of How her and the family. How could you do that? How could you do that? William F. Buckley did that to his son, had an illegitimate child, his grandson. And William F. Buckley in his will said, I'm not, you know, no money for him. If I'm remembering this correctly, and I'm sorry, I know everyone reveres William F. Buckley, but I just, I, I lost all respect. I, I have no respect for that at all. If you your child or grandchild, like that's really important. The grandchild's innocent. Well, I totally agree. And your blood. Yeah, I know. And Sorry, I don't get it's a big <laughs> deal. So sidetracked, but like, I think Joe Biden is actually a really rotten person. I guess is what I'm saying. I hate to say that, and I think it matters. So, what sort you, of person you are? I do. Everyone's like, oh, it doesn't matter. Well, it matters to me. Yeah, it does matter. And all of the, like, the, the you know, and Trump is a complicated person, of course, and he's got, sure. and he has moral failings, no question. But the lies that we're constantly told about, his moral failings were, like, absurd. Like, the idea that he's, like, trying to personally profit off of the presidency. I, the, like, all of the available evidence, uh, uh, like, demonstrates the complete opposite. Like, he's lost billions of dollars in net worth by doing it. It's endless hassle, endless litigation, endless, yeah. like, the, like I, what deal has existed that has enriched him as a result of having been in the presence. Well, he's gotten a lot poorer, for sure. Um, does feel to me like he's going to go to jail if he doesn't win. They're going to put him in jail. They're very desperate for that. Are they going to put him in jail before? I keep hearing, people keep sending me this stuff from Merchon. That sentencing date is mid-September. That's correct, the 18th, I think. And um, they really want to. I, I, uh, This will come down to, I think, a political assessment because... They don't want to martyr him ahead of it. So the so putting a man in jail two months, what you know, eight yes. weeks before a presidential election. No, on, that's right. On fake charges. That's right. Yeah. But that that judge, remember, he kept threatening him with all these gag orders and saying, "Oh, you violated, it, violated." But he never quite put him in jail, even though he was constantly hanging that threat out there. I think it's because they became aware during the trial that this was backfiring politically. So it wasn't just Biden self-immolating. It was that the public started becoming convinced that Trump really is a victim of a rigged system. 
And that was showing up in the polls throughout that process. And so they have to be cognizant of this. Now, I won't put it past them to do something tyrannical that's against their political interests because they have this They can't control desire. themselves. Yeah. yeah, but it's one of the factors. It's so unfortunate that that's it. That that's what it's all about. It's hard to believe. That, yeah, I, I I guess this is the disadvantage, as I said earlier, of age. It's like, I, I refuse to believe that could even happen in the United States. But okay. if it did, I think we could wind up. I mean, that close to the election, I don't know if they'll do it. But this is, here's the thing that, it still amazes me. July 13th, Trump was shot in the head this year, <laughs> in case you were forgetting. The news cycle lasted maybe a week, maybe two on that subject, and it's evaporated. It's gone. And do you? I mean, I was, I, I know how quickly news cycles move, so I've, I've and, the, and the desire not to talk about that. I could, I could smell it coming a thousand miles away. I knew that they would move on. From well, the Trump people didn't want to talk about it, to be honest. I mean, Biden's Secret Service allowed Trump to get shot in the face. They allowed it, whether, you know, intentionally or not. So, like, why is that not the biggest story in the world? Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. We hope you'll subscribe to it. And by the way, you can hit the little bell on there and get notifications every time we produce a video. We hope you'll do that also.